This technique to solve systems is called elimination, and that you would want to use this technique when you have two equations that are written in standard form. Remember, standard form is where all the variables are on one side and the constant is on the other side. So when the equations are written like this, then it makes sense to use this technique elimination because the other techniques are a little more work. So the first step I'm about to tell you might sound like a bunch of nonsense until you actually see what it means, but just play along, go with me, and I promise you that I'll explain as we go through. So the first step is to multiply, if necessary, to get one of the coefficients opposites. And obviously, I'll explain what that means when we encounter an example where it's necessary. But step one, sometimes you don't need. Step two, however, you will always need, and that's to add the equations to get one variable to eliminate. And obviously that makes sense because the technique we're doing is elimination, so we want to eliminate something. The next step is to solve. And the final step is to plug the value in to find the other variable. All right, so lots of steps. Let's see what it means. Okay, we look at example A, and we have this system right here. And we want to find out the values of x and y. So step one says to multiply if necessary to get one set of coefficients to be opposites. But I actually don't need to do that because if you look at the coefficients of the y, one is positive three and the other is negative three. So step one is already done for me in this example. All I have to do is go straight to step two, which is add. So when you add, you add straight down x plus x. Well, remember that's one x plus one x. So that'd be two x. And positive three plus negative 3 cancels out, so the y's go away. And then negative 2 plus 16 is 14. So step 3 is to solve. I'll divide by 2, and the value of x is 7. So remember, the answer to a system is the coordinate point where the two equations intersect. So this is going to have 7 comma something as its intersection point. Now what I'll do is I will take the equation or I'm sorry, the value of x, and I get to pick which equation I want to plug it in for. So which one looks easier? Well, they both kind of look the same, um, but I'll pick the one with the plus. So I'm going to take x and plug it in to the original first equation. So 7 plus 3y equals negative 2. Drop a line, minus 7. That gives me negative 9. And when I divide, I get negative 3. So the y value of my answer is negative 3. So these intersect at the point 7, comma, negative 3. And you can check by plugging in 7, comma, negative 3 into the equation and see if it makes sense. So I'll talk it through. 7 plus 3 times negative 3 equals negative 2. So that would be 7 plus negative 9, and that is negative 2. So that works. And this would be 7 plus 9, because it will be minus negative, and 7 plus 9 is 16, so that works as well. All right, let's check out another one. So we've got this system, and if you look at the equations, if you go to add, nothing cancels, right? Negative 6 doesn't cancel a negative 2, and 5 doesn't cancel a negative 4. So I'm going to have to do step 1 by myself this time, which is to multiply. So you can either turn the negative 2 into a negative 6, or you can turn the 5s into something that's the similar, um, but you want to make them be the same. So if I multiply this bottom equation by negative 3, then I'll have 6x plus 12y equals negative uh, 42. Now, if I bring that original over, negative 6x plus 5y equals 25. Do you see what happens now? If I go to add them, these 6s will cancel. Negative 6 plus 6 cancels. So I just have 17y equals, i uh, got to go with calculator, 25 plus negative 42 is negative 17. 
So then when I divide by 17, I'll get y equals negative 1. But in order to do that, I just had to multiply first. So that would be an example of where you would have to do step 1 because you can't just add right away. So I know that the second half of my answer is going to say negative 1. And now I'm going to pick an equation to plug it in. I'll pick the first one. doesn't matter. You can pick whichever one you want. So I'm going to plug negative 1 into this original. You should always use one of the originals. So I'll get negative 6x plus 5 times negative 1 equals 25. So that's negative 6x minus 5 equals 25. Drop a line, add 5. Negative 6x equals 30. And so I get x equals negative 5. So the other half of this point is negative 5. Um, so that's their intersection. And just like I did up in part A, you can also talk through a check. All right, in this question, we're going to write our own equations. So I want you to pause the video and read the story, and then I'll help you write the equations. So we've got this guide, and it tells us how to set up the equation. So let's talk through it. We're going to use it first for me and then for my friend. So the number of hostas that I got was 8 times the cost of each hosta was x, because that's we don't know that, uh, plus the number of daylilies I got was 15 times y. I don't know what the cost of each daylily is. But the total amount that I spent was 193. Now we're going to do it for my friend. So my friend bought three hostas times x plus 12 daylilies times y, because I don't know either of the prices, and my friend equals 117. So I'm going to just write those a little uh, friendlier together. So 8x plus 15y equals 193. And I'm going to put that on top of 3x plus 12y equals 117. So now I have to figure out how to cancel. Because right now an 8 and a 3 don't cancel each other, and neither do a 15 and a 12. Um, but I can turn the x's both into 24's. I can make one of them positive 24, one of them negative 24, and then they can cancel. And the reason that I chose the x's is because the numbers are smaller. If you wanted to do the y's, you would have to turn them both into 60's, and that just makes the numbers a lot larger to deal with. So I'm going to multiply the top by negative 3 and the bottom by positive 8, and then let's see what happens. Now, you'll notice that I'm putting parentheses around my equations. The reason I do that is because a lot of times we forget to multiply everything. So what will happen, for example, is that people will multiply this one. They'll get negative 24x uh, minus 45y. But then when we get over here, they forget to bring the negative 3 all the way over. And so what I do, for my own remembering, is that I put this parenthesis here as a trigger to myself, so I remember to multiply the 193. So when I see it, I remember it's supposed to also be multiplied. So when I multiply 193 times 3, I get negative 579. And now I have to do it with the bottom one. I get positive 24x. 8 times 12 is 96y. And then 117 times 8 is 936. Now when I go to add, these 24s will eliminate each other. So negative 45 plus 96 is 51. And then negative 579 plus 936 is 357. Divide by 51, and you get that y equals 7. So since this is a word problem, we need to put a label. What does y stand for? If you go back up to the story, y stood for the number of, or the, I'm sorry, not the number, the cost of each daylily. So it's $7 per daylily. 
Now, do we need to find the cost for hostas? And the answer is no, because it didn't ask. All it said was find the cost of each day lily. So I don't need to waste my time doing that because it's not necessary to do so. So you should always read the question because sometimes you might end up doing more work than you really need to. All right, we're going to do a lot more of these in class, and we're going to spend some time doing some word problems. So hopefully you'll get better at writing the equations if you are not good at it already. So just like always, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.